Today, we're going to be taking a look at how I use SQL as a data analyst in 2024. Now, SQL stands for Structured Query Language. And in my own personal opinion, I think it's the most critical skill set that you need to know to land your first job in data analytics. And the reason why, as, as a data analyst, you're going to be spending hours every day coding in SQL at most jobs. And when you go through the interview process, often you're going to have a technical interview or two that deal with SQL questions. And if you don't know SQL, well, you're not going to land that data analytics job. Also, SQL is going to be used heavily by other people within your engineering department. Data scientists use SQL all the time. Data engineers use SQL all, all the time. And even outside the data side of things, software engineers often have to use SQL within their applications. So it's important that you master this skill set. Now, SQL all begins with a database. And essentially what a database is on its like simplest level, imagine many different tables of Excel spreadsheets, and you're going to be able to write code to connect these different tables together and extract information. But instead of hosting this information in Google Sheets or Excel, you're going to be hosting this within a database. And there's a few different options that you could host it in. You could have it locally, you could have it within a server or a cloud provider. And essentially what happens is when you write SQL, you send that specific query to the database to grab that information that you want. And the best part is, is if you saved your query, you can replicate your results to an extent. I say extent because often within databases, there is going to be live data going in and out or data is going to be refreshed daily. So if you do run that query a little bit later in the year, you might have some different results. Now for myself, I've been using SQL for about three years now through two different companies. Now the SQL variants that I've personally used, mostly in the past, I use MS SQL Server. At my job right now, I use Postgres and I'm doing a little bit of testing with MySQL with an app that I am currently developing. Now there are going to be some variants of these specific SQL languages, depending on the tools that you use. So for example, in my current job right now, we use Redshift. Now it's based off of Postgres, but there is going to be some slight changes in some syntax. But what I would say is probably about 80 to 90% of the code is going to be the same. And you'll quickly learn the differences pretty fast when your code bugs out and you can pretty much find the solutions to these through Stack Overflow, going through some documentation, or my personal favorite, throwing the code in a chat GPT and saying, what is wrong and letting it auto correct for you. Although I haven't really tested a GitHub Copilot yet, but I've heard some great news about that. And one thing I should also mention where specifically you can write your SQL code at. So some of the ways that I've written SQL code here in the past, I've used SQL Server Studio for my MS SQL. I've used VS Code. Uh, especially when I want to integrate SQL with Python, which we'll talk a little bit later, as well as mode. All right, so you may be wondering, how do I use SQL now as a data analyst? Well, there's a few different ways. And i like the very easiest level and something that happens all the time is I get asked one-off questions. It doesn't necessarily have to be my boss. It could be someone else within the organization, uh, but they have some questions on data. So like a very basic question someone may have is how many merchants had more than 10% of their total transactions as refunds. And there's a few different ways that you could present that data. So the first thing that you could do is just find the total number of merchants and you could send it over a communication channel, whether it's like an email or a Slack or a Microsoft Teams. On the other side of things, maybe you wanna present a little bit more information, like beyond just the number of merchants, maybe you wanna have merchants names or their emails or their total percentages, because maybe we wanna sort that data and you can do that through a CSV file or an Excel file. Now, if it's something that's going to be asked multiple times, I try to create a report out of it. That way I don't have to do the same exact analysis all the time and I'll build it for a stakeholder so then they can view this report whenever they want. Now, currently I use Looker, but a lot of different companies will also use Power BI or Tableau. So those are some good skill sets to learn. So for some examples of SQL code, at the very basic level, sometimes I'll have code that literally only takes three, four, maybe even five lines of code, and it's super easy. It's cake, right? You can knock this out in five minutes. But sometimes there are going to be those SQL projects that are going to go 500 plus lines, even a thousand plus lines. 
And that's just because there's a lot of complex filtering. You're going to have to deal with a lot of tables, right? On the easy side of things, you might just query from one table. Maybe the data is nice and presentable and ready to go in that table. Sometimes it's not. And you're going to be working with over 20 different tables uh, because you're going to have to find some super niche information about a merchant. Again, depends how easy the data is stored. Let's go over a very basic example. So our first very basic example is going to be, I want to see the customer IDs of merchants who have had chargeback transactions over $500. So you might write a basic query like select the ID from transactions where the transaction type equals chargeback and amount is going to be greater than 500. So that way you see all the different IDs that have that specific type of chargeback. Now, if you want to take this code a little bit farther, you can also put select distinct ID because if a ID has multiple transactions with chargebacks over 500, they'll populate twice. If you put that distinct tag in there, they will only show once. So for our second example, let's try to add in a little bit more information. We want to have our customer ID, the business DBA, business email, and the business owner's name. Also, let's order by ID this time. So you might write something out like select t.id bi.businessdba bi.businessemail bi.businessownername from transactions t enter join business info bi on bi.id equals tid where t.transaction type equals chargeback and t.amount is greater than or equal to 500 order by t.id. Now, there's a few other changes that I made into this code, right? The first thing that we did is we put aliases for the different tables. And you're going to need that specifically as you join to multiple tables. It can be quite confusing and it is much faster to put aliases here, such as T for transactions and BI for business info. Another thing you'll notice is I had a specific join. This time I had inner join. Now, in this case, the inner join will work perfectly if the data is great in both tables. Sometimes you're going to have wacky data within your databases. So maybe you'll have to do a left join if there are missing records, which I will say you will encounter a lot as a data analyst. The other thing that I put in this code that might be a little bit new is the order. It's at the very bottom and we ordered by the t.id. Another basic example, which will up the difficulty a little bit. Let's say I want to grab merchants who had over 10,000 plus in refunds or 5,000 plus in chargebacks. So what I like using is with CTEs. So here's how I write this one. I say with chargebacks as select ID, we're going to sum the T dot amount as chargeback total from transactions where transaction type equals chargeback. Then I'm going to have another CTE. I'm going to say comma refunds as select ID, sum T amount as refund total from transactions where transaction type equals refund. All right. And now we're going to have our main SQL query. So it's going to be very similar to what I showed in example number two. This time we're going to just say select bi.id, bi business dba, bi business email, bi business owner name from business info bi, right? Pretty much the same. Now what I'm going to do is left join. Uh, these two widths that I created. So left join chargebacks C on C.ID equals BI.ID. And then I'm going to left join refunds R on R.ID equals BI.ID. Now I'm going to filter down below. And the way I'm going to use the filter is say where, and then I'm going to put these together. I'm going to say chargeback total is going to be greater than 10,000. I'm going to put an or statement refund total is greater than five. So that should be pretty easy. And like this is bare minimum of the type of queries that you're going to be expected to know as a data analyst. So some other examples of SQL code that I use quite often, a limit or top. This is going to filter down our, our result set to a number. Often it's like either 10 or 100. And that's just a way to make sure that your code works properly. Another thing that it's common to use is case statements. Uh, one of the use cases for me at least, is the group customers. A good example of this is like if certain customer IDs were as part of an ownership group, you can build out a few different case statements based around that. Window functions, ranking can often be important. Maybe you want to select the newest record for a merchant within a table. You can use a window function with, and there's multiple different types of ranks. I've talked about it 
here on the YouTube channel. Like, you'll use that for strings quite a bit. And then also temp tables. And how I use temp tables is if I wanna insert data within our database, but not specifically keep it, but add in additional data that we already have stored in our database, I'll use a temp table for that. So some of the other SQL tasks that I do, maybe I don't do them on a daily basis, but they are pretty important for the job. Maybe not for a beginner data analyst, but as you get some experience, first is gonna be finding issues within the database. I guarantee you, no matter what job you're at, there's gonna be issues with your data. You need to start keeping track of all the issues that you find, so that way you can work with the data engineering team to clean that up, or if they give you permission, you can clean it up yourself. Good examples of this, let's say you have ink columns that are being used as strings, right? You have some bad data, so like two different tables may not line up with sales data. Another way is gonna be rewriting code to make it more efficient. So. There's a few different cases for this. The first one is you have an older data analyst that left the company years ago and they wrote crappy code and there was never any quality control based around it and reports take too long. So instead of having a report that takes a minute or two minutes to load up for your team, you wanna drop that time down to 30 seconds, 15 seconds, or 10 seconds. So you're gonna have to rewrite that specific report, especially if a lot of employees at your company use that report. It's a lot of wasted time waiting for uh, resources to load. Other times too, as a software engineer might write some SQL code. Now, software engineers are way better programmers than data analysts, but sometimes they make basic SQL mistakes like doing a select star from a large table, which uses a lot of resources and takes time to run. So sometimes you'll go in there and make modifications because the software engineers, they don't prioritize writing great SQL statements. Rewriting code can also happen if a table ends up being depreciated and a new one is gonna be created. You'll have to go back and change all the different instances within reports that use that specific old table. Okay, so another thing that I do is I create tables. And this can be done purely with SQL code or you can use SQL code with Python to supplement it. And this is a good segue to talk about using SQL with Python. I use this when I have to build out specific data projects. And within these data projects, you're gonna use your SQL code to both read and also write into your database. So a good example for reading into your database, let's say you wanna grab chargeback and refund rates for merchants within the database. You wanna format this as part of a multi-sheet Excel document. And in one specific sheet, you wanna have a merchant breakdown over the last six months. Now. If you wanna write specifically into your database, let's say you build out a calculator for your risk team, and anytime that they run the calculator, you wanna save that specific results within your database. So you'll have to build out that integration, write some SQL statements, and now you're storing whatever was filled out in your calculator into your database. Now, for myself, I've deployed these apps directly through Streamlit. I know this is a little bit more Python than SQL base, but you streamlet and then also deploying these directly to AWS because you wanna make sure that these are secure. So every data analyst job is different and this is just a little bit of how SQL has played a part within my data analytics journey over the last three years across two different jobs. So do you use SQL differently in your job? Make sure to post a comment down below and if you're looking to be a data analyst in 2024, watch this video right over here.